so we're actually recording this on 420. And if you don't know, <laughs> well, that's not the joke. You're jumping the gun. And it made me think, I, I haven't smoked weed in a long time. But when I did, uh, it made me think about pets a lot for some reason. Not like all the time, not constantly. That'd be a weird affliction. But this one time <laughs> I was thinking about pets. And I realized when you get your pets spayed or neutered, you basically yeah. have a tiny fur animal eunuch that lives with you. <laughs> yeah, I guess you do. And I'd like to think if you have a lot of pets and only one of them is spayed or neutered, it's like Game of Thrones and they're going behind the other pets' backs and orchestrating things behind. I need to, it's a good thing I don't smoke weed anymore. everyone i'm hugo and my name is fernando and uh i killed jake yeah we brought in a mexican um actually a uh, fun fact i almost died the other day which is why this is late i puked and shit more puke and shit than i think someone could puke and shit in a day but i did it it's impressive it's one of his skills i honestly think it was so impressive that should go on your resume now if this doesn't work out Ew. i don't know what job requires the skill of ejecting as much fluid from your body as you possibly can <laughs> but that's the job for you yeah i nailed it uh so actually in the quran reloaded uh I, we talked about children in this house were throwing up that makes them sound like i'm not responsible for them uh, my girlfriend's kids threw up all over the fucking place, and I was like, ha ha, they threw up, they're gross. Yeah, I'm grosser. <laughs> they gave it to me, and it was super fucking gross. And actually, uh, we were both bed, literally bedridden for like 20 hours. It was ridiculous. That's awesome. That's the kind, <laughs> I want I want the kind of relationship where you can sit in bed and just excrete fluids together. Well, it's not like we just shit and puked in the bed, I which would be kinky. But, uh, no, it was, <laughs> you know, like, when you spend, like, a day in bed with your girlfriend, like, it's implied that you just fucked all day and, like, had this romantic day. No, it was the literal opposite. It was as little sex as you could have. This is the one time the only fluids that did not come out of you were from the crotch area. <laughs> so enough about my fluids. For now, at today least. We have Today we have to not give a shit. About literally anything. Yeah, uh, last episode we actually tackled a lot of stuff, or should I say, God and Gabriel, ha, ha, they're different people, ha, 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 bits. Anyway, we did all of Proverbs and all of Psalms. Now we're getting to Ecclesiastes, which is similar in the sense that when you're talking about the Bible and you're, it's into different sections, the beginning in Genesis, uh, all the way through like Exodus is sort of the origin of the Jewish people and, and this journey, what they went through. Then you go through their kings and their laws and stuff. And then when you get to this section, it's more wisdom. It's Jewish wisdom is what it is. And Ecclesiastes is full of that if you think nihilism is the best way to go. Wisdom. Use the word wisdom. It sounds more like, like a first-year philosophy student. Like, and he just found out that nihilism is a thing. And he's like, yeah, I don't care about anything. I don't even care. Life is meaningless. I'm going to drink black coffee. <laughs> yeah, so today we're going to go ahead and start off in Ecclesiastes chapter 1. By the way, they said it's supposed to be Solomon who wrote this. The no. thing is, though, it's not. It was written 600 years after he was supposed to have died. Uh, yeah, and, like everyone so, says that. I have no idea why they attribute this to Solomon whatsoever. Then again, I also question why they tried to attribute like Genesis through Exodus to Moses. That's weird. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Yeah, uh, so this basically, think about it as like a, uh, and it wasn't really a joke when I said philosophy student 101, uh, but imagine the professor is in front of the class and we are all sitting in the, uh, you know, behind our desks or what have you, or in the amphitheater, whatever. And uh, we're taking notes, and he's like, write this down. 
pretty much everything sucks. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. Uh, no, it doesn't actually. The earth is gonna blow up someday because the sun's gonna expand and envelop us. If we're if we're gonna be nihilistic here, at the very least, show that even the earth doesn't really give a shit. The sun rises and the sun sets and it hurries back to where it rises. This is interesting. This is a verse that the church used at the time to try and tell people, hey, Galileo's wrong, heliocentrism, not the thing. Look, it says right here in the Bible, written by Solomon, who's like the wisest motherfucker in the Bible next to Jesus. He says the sun sets. How can it set if we're spinning around it, silly Galileo? Uh, I say silly Galileo, but really they were like, no, no, stop, or bad things are going to happen to you. Popes are fun. Who's the most fun pope? Who's the most fun pope? I'm going with John Paul, because he almost got shot. He's like Tupac, basically. Except better, because Tupac died. I'm going with Pope Joan, because she probably didn't exist, and I think the idea of like a Mulan-esque uh, escapades where a woman was pretending to be a man to be the pope is hilarious. Like, I feel like maybe the other priests would go to the pope, Pope Joan, and be like, Hey, how many... How many young boys did you touch this week? And she's like, oh, so many. Loads of them. Yeah, but like, she's like, no, I'm not into little boys. I'm a woman. That's not like Mulan at all. It's, uh, we, okay, we watch Mulan in very different states of mind, but that's neither here or there. Shout out to Donny Osmond for playing the least Asian singing voice I've ever heard. The winds blow to the south and turn to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course, and all streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. What? what? <laughs> the sea is never full. That's sort of, sort of relative, isn't it? This is, uh... I guess it is. You're right. I wasn't even going to bring that up, but, uh... <laughs> some creationists use this verse to say, See, the Bible talked about the water cycle. They They know what's up. Science in the Bible. No, no, this is the least scientific thing because it clearly implies that they thought, hey, water keeps flowing into the ocean. Where's it all going? Keeps falling yeah. out of the sky. Shit should be full. No. <laughs> <laughs> Shit should be full. Dude, if I looked at the Pacific Ocean and every day I saw streams running into it, I'd be like, holy shit. That ocean is huge. I feel like this whole episode, you are high. It's that. Whoa, was... man, that's such a big body of water, bro. Like, think about the bong we could make out of it. I'm not even, that, it wasn't even a joke on my part. It's an accurate appraisal of what I would say if I saw the Pacific Ocean 2,000 years ago. <laughs> Holy shit, that's a big ocean. Look at how big that ocean is. How full do you think it is? This is the 420 episode, fuck. The place the streams come from, there they never return again. All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The <laughs> the eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear its fill of hearing. Unless you're blind or deaf. Yeah, then you're like... And then it starts full, right? Yeah. You starts topped off. Nailed it. Well, you've had enough, God says to the blind baby. We're, we're way better philosophers than Solomon. We're gonna sorbo the shit out of this. Oh, for sure. What has been will be again, and what has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, look, Wait, this is something... On, hold, hold on, hold on. Nothing new under the sun. VR porn just happened. Oh, trust me, I'm aware. <laughs> Did you see the video of that guy? He was in the... He was VR goggles, and I guess this device exists because, of course, this is one of the first peripherals that would exist for VR. Is it a, is it a blowjob peripheral? It absolutely fucking lootly is. It goes right on your dick and you wear this suit and it, it that thing sucked him you off. You wear a suit? Oh, you he was in a suit. I don't know if it's optional or if he was just wait, wearing Wait, 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 wait. Was he the first one to R&D this? I don't know. I just Was he the first guinea pig? Like, I don't know what's going to happen when he sticks his dick in there. And then it was like success. And then everyone in the control room was like... Woo! Yes, and like like in Apollo thirteen, when that one guy gets a vest from his wife. Yeah, I don't. Someone got a vest, but it had like a little tiny penis on it. I don't know a lot of things, but I know with my luck, when the AI revolution begins and robots become sentient and start taking over, I'm definitely gonna have my dick in a robot at that point, and bad things are gonna happen to it. You know, it's it's about time too, because women have had the upper hand and pretty much the monopoly on all sex toys up to this point. Yeah, like the only sex toy that we've ever had has just been another vagina that you hold in your hand, a less good vagina. But now it's like, haha, 
body sex suit. Deal with that. This robot suit's gonna suck my dick. The key to a good, healthy fleshlight is, you know how, like, a cast iron pan, you gotta season it, you gotta, you, you don't wanna wash that shit. Hmm. Same philosophy goes for fleshlights. <laughs> if you let stuff sit in there for enough time and don't clean it, it gets all right. squishy and warm. And it's, ev- a, it's a bell curve, because at first it's just spoils, but after that it's kind of like, you know how cheese gets a rind on it? Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag cum rind. <laughs> True story. True story. I've been shitting my. I've been shitting like crazy recently, and when I started to laugh, I had to snap it shut to make sure I didn't shit myself. Oh, hashtag cum rind, hashtag butt dam. <laughs> no one remembers the former generations, and even those yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow them. What What the fuck are you talking? You're writing a book. <laughs> you are writing a book that we are reading now. We remember you now. I mean, we rem- I guess we remember Solomon, but not whoever actually wrote this. Well, yeah, because they didn't put their name at the bottom. It's their fault. This dude definitely went off his, like, desert Xanax right before he wrote this. He was in a dark place. <laughs> What's desert Xanax? Rape. Wait, he he raped? Oh, he raped so many. What did he rape? Like, anything. He is the desert. It's like a free-for-all. Any hole in a storm, as they say. Do they say that? Uh, Is that a saying? Any hole in a storm? I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Billy Joel said that. Verse twelve. We're all the way on verse twelve so far. We're doing a great job. Just mm. cracker jack. I, the teacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. I applied my mind to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. What a heavy burden God has laid <laughs> on mankind! I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless. A chasing after the wind. That's a little... (laughs) I've seen everything? What kind of douche is like, I've seen everything in the world there is to see, and it's all terrible. Terrible, I say. Come on, dude. No, there's so many things that we have done, even probably contemporary to his time, that were amazing, like, toilets get invented soon. Yeah. Like, he, he doesn't have to shit in the desert anymore. Pretty soon he could... Does he know that J- Japanese people can shit in the toilet, like, talks to them and then sprays their butthole? And then it cleans it themselves? When this was written, I guarantee this dude didn't know the Japanese existed. I mean, there's just so many amazing things. Like, back to the Japanese. They have vending machines for, um, you could get used underwear out of it from ladies. Lady panties. Yeah. What is crooked cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. I hey, s- watch me watch me spin a Bible verse. Okay. Watch me spin it. Yeah. In Ecclesiastes, it says in verse 15 of chapter 1, What is crooked cannot be straightened. Ah, meaning, don't fucking pray the gay away. It's weird. Like, don't try. It's they're crooked, they can't be straightened, they like dicks. I said to myself, look, I have increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say if this guy lived a couple thousand years later, he'd be a douchey internet commenter who thinks he knows better than everyone else around him and won't back his claims up at all. Nihilist XXX. He has an extensive collection of Triblies and Katanas. Trilbies? Yeah. A true hipster nihilist would have a Wakazashi, which is shorter. You need a lot of swords when you're like that, so you can protect your virginity. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly. But I learned this too, is just chasing after the wind. I've tried everything, guys. Being smart, being dumb, being crazy, none of it's worth it. So how about this, Solomon? Kill yourself. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow. The more knowledge, the more grief. I don't necessarily (laughs) disagree with that. They say, like, ignorance is bliss or whatever, but, like... You don't gotta be a douche about it, dude. <laughs> like, come right, on. Right, like, grief? Like, 
Honestly, wouldn't, it, wouldn't wisdom also give you a little bit of perspective and understand that maybe you're insignificant in the larger scheme of things, but in your immediate area, you can make things better for you and those around you? Or? Yeah, like I'm an atheist, and uh, obviously, and I don't think anything happens when you die. I think eventually everyone I've ever known and everything I've ever known will be destroyed and the earth will be gone and humans will probably go extinct at some point and there will be no one left to matter. But you know what I did yesterday that made me really happy? I was driving. I was driving around. I'm like, I'm gonna get an ice cream cone, and I got a fucking ice cream cone, and I ate it driving home. And I was like, "All right, good day. That's fine. I don't." I thought you were gonna tell like a story about how you like helped a homeless guy or something. Oh no! You bought yourself an ice cream cone. Oh no! No, this is a <laughs> this is a fat fuck story. This is not a I'm a good person story. <laughs> oh. Uh, I did not eat an ice cream cone yesterday. I did, however, wipe my butt more times in one day than I ever had. But see, now you'll appreciate the next time you have a good solid poop. And that's more than Solomon ever did. So. At this point, I don't feel like that's in my future. <laughs> you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Take some Imodium. Yeah, my poop's black from all the bismuth in my mouth. So, thanks everyone. Uh, next week we'll be back to do more stuff. I don't know if it's a Bible episode or if it's another thing. We haven't scheduled it yet. Whoops. Whoopsie. <laughs> If you want, you can always follow us on Twitter at Bible Reloaded. You can always follow Hugo at Hugo Reloaded, and you can also subscribe to the channel and get the things when they come up every Wednesday, unless you uh, saw this on the day it was uploaded, in which case I had all all sorts of diarrhea, <laughs> and I was puking. You can donate to our Patreon campaign. If you do that, you have access to our monthly Patreon live shows. You can all watch them live or go back into our patron feed and see any of the previous ones we've done. I think we've done like five or six so far, probably. Um, if we get, if we get to $2,000, we'll, uh, Hugo will make his own cum rind and sell it. Okay. I'll do that. I'll scrape it. I'll scrape off several layers and I'll send it to you in the mail in an envelope. A cum rind. I will, I will oh. literally, that's if you've ever shipped anything internationally, if anyone international wins, you got to fill out a customs form and explain like what it is in the customs form. I will write cum rind. <laughs> and yeah, you probably won't get it, quite honestly. The customs guy, you like, cum rind? This can't possibly be what I think this is. And then they'll open it and they'll <laughs> briefly pass out due to the smell. <laughs> if you get lucky, they'll be a fan of ours. And it's like, uh... Smells like Hugo. You both, you both get to enjoy the cum rind yeah. together. It's really good. what it truly is. What you want to do with a good cum rind, uh, get one of those... Make, make stock. You put it in your stock Oh, for see, soup. I was going to say, get get your steeper that you use to make maybe some fresh tea. Same difference. And, it's the same, yeah. same concept. Yeah. Cheesecloth, if you, don't, if you sure. don't have, like, a steeper. Whatever. Yeah. So until next time, <laughs> I'm, I'm a human cum rind. Oh, and I guess that makes me the fleshlight. And, oh, that's a, yeah, that's accurate. That's one of the more accurate metaphors. <laughs> and this has been The Bible Reloaded. Please come back again. It'll be better, I promise. Are you proud of yourselves? You chose this. This is something you clicked on actively. You know, the the clicking isn't the worst part. Like, the clicking, if you click on it, that could have been an accident, or maybe they hadn't seen us in a long time and they expected some semblance of qu quality. But no. if they made it this far, then no. fuck you. Right, they're still here. They're still listening to this. They're like, is this gonna end? We don't know how to naturally end things.